In the Northern Hemisphere summer of 1940 Germany rapidly defeated the French Third Republic, and colonial administration of French Indochina modern-day Vietnam, Laos and Cambodia passed to the French state Vichy France. In September 1940 Japanese troops first entered parts of Indochina, and in July 1941 Japan extended its control over the whole of French Indochina. The United States, concerned by Japanese expansion, started putting embargoes on exports of steel and oil to Japan from July 1940. The desire to escape these embargoes and to become self-sufficient in resources ultimately contributed to Japan's decision to attack on December 7, 1941 the British Empire in Hong Kong and Malaya and simultaneously the USA in the Philippines and at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This led to the USA declaring war against Japan on December 8, 1941. The US then joined the British Empire, already at war with Germany since 1939, and its existing allies in the fight against the Axis powers. Indochinese communists had set up hidden headquarters in 1941, but most of the Vietnamese resistance to Japan, France, or both, including both communist and non communist groups, remained based over the border, in China. As part of the Chinese opposition to Japanese expansion, the Chinese had fostered the formation of a Vietnamese nationalist resistance movement, the Dong Minh Hoi (DMH) in Nanking in 1935–1936. This included communists, but was not controlled by them. When this did not provide the desired intelligence data, they released Ho Chi Minh from jail. In 1941, he returned to Vietnam from China to lead an underground centered on the communist Viet Minh. This mission was assisted by Western intelligence agencies, including the American Office of Strategic Services. OSS. Free French intelligence also tried to affect developments in the Vichy Japanese collaboration. In March 1945 the Japanese imprisoned the French administrators and took direct control of Vietnam until the Allies defeated them in August. At that point, the Vietnamese August Revolution set up a provisional government, but the French took back control of the country in 1945–1946. In looking at the broad picture of Southeast Asia at the end of World War II, several conflicting movements appear. Generic Western anti-communism that saw the French as protector of the area from communist expansion. Nationalist and anti-colonialist movements that wanted independence from the French. Communists who wanted to expand their influence. The lines between these movements were not always clear, and some alliances were of convenience. Prior to his death in 1945, Franklin D. Roosevelt made several comments about not wanting the French to regain control of Indochina. In 1999, former U.S. Secretary of Defense and architect of the U.S. involvement in Vietnam Robert McNamara wrote that both sides had missed opportunities. The U.S. had both ignored its own Office of Strategic Services OSS intelligence reports on Ho's nationalism, and failed. When the Truman administration became suspicious he was merely a Soviet pawn, to probe the situation. McNamara found U.S. claims unconvincing that China was a threat, given a millennium of Sino Vietnamese enmity, as well as Dean Acheson's claim that the French blackmailed the U.S. into supporting them. As for the Viet Minh, McNamara believes they misinterpreted the lack of U.S. response to be equivalent to enmity, and, allowed themselves to be blackmailed by the Soviets and Chinese. <laughs> Pre-war events In France itself, an anti-fascist popular front, included the centre, left, and communists, stated a new policy for all French colonies, not just Indochina. A corresponding Indochinese Democratic Front formed. An unpopular governor-general was replaced, encouraging Vietnamese nationalists to meet a French commission of inquiry with lists of grievances. 
By the time the Commission arrived, however, the leftists were now not just members of an opposition, but part of a government concerned about Japanese expansion. Socialist Minister for the Colonies Marius Moutet, in September, sent a message to French officials in Saigon, "...you will maintain public order... the improvement of the political and economic situation is our preoccupation but French order must reign in Indochina as elsewhere." Moutet's Popular Front failed in actually liberalizing the situation, and he was to be involved in a greater failure a decade later. Topic 1937. Throughout East and Southeast Asia, tensions had been building between 1937 and 1941 as Japan expanded into China. Franklin D. Roosevelt regarded this as an infringement on U.S. interests in China. The U.S. had already accepted an apology and indemnity for the Japanese bombing of the USS Panay, a gunboat on the Yangtze River in China. Topic: 1938. The French Popular Front fell, and the Indochinese Democratic Front went underground. When a new French government, still under the Third Republic, formed in August 1938, among its principal concerns were security of metropolitan France as well as its empire. Among its first acts was to name General Georges Catru Governor General of Indochina. He was the first military governor general since French civilian rule had begun in 1879, following the conquest starting in 1858, reflecting the single greatest concern of the new government, defense of the homeland and the defense of the empire. Catrux's immediate concern was with Japan, who were actively fighting in nearby China. Topic. 1939 Both the French and Indochinese Communist parties were outlawed. <inaudible> <inaudible> World War II <inaudible> 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 After the defeat of France, with an armistice on June 22, 1940, roughly two-thirds of the country was put under direct German military control. The remaining part of southeast France, and the French colonies, were under a nominally independent government, headed by the First World War hero, Marshal Philippe Pétain, with its capital at Vichy. Japan, not yet allied with Germany until the signing of the Tripartite Pact in September 1940, asked for German help in stopping supplies going through Indochina to China. <laughs> Increased Axis pressure Catru, who had first asked for British support, had no source of military assistance from outside France, stopped the trade to China to avoid further provoking the Japanese. A Japanese verification group, headed by Isaku Nishimura entered Indochina on June 25. On the same day that Nishimura arrived, Vichy dismissed Catru, for independent foreign contact. He was replaced by Vice Admiral Jean Dicou, who commanded the French naval forces in the Far East, and was based in Saigon. Dicou and Catru were in general agreement about policy, and considered managing Nishimura the first priority. Dicou had additional worries. The senior British admiral in the area, on the way from Hong Kong to Singapore, visited Deku and told him that he might be ordered to sink Deku's flagship, with the implicit suggestion that Deku could save his ships by taking them to Singapore, which appalled Deku. While the British had not yet attacked French ships that would not go to the side of the Allies, that would happen at Mers el Kabir in North Africa within two weeks, it is not known if that was suggested to, or suspected by, Deku. 
deliberately delaying. Deku did not arrive in Hanoi until July 20, while Katru stalled Nishimura on basing negotiations, also asking for U.S. help. Reacting to the initial Japanese presence in Indochina, on July 5, the U.S. Congress passed the Export Control Act, banning the shipment of aircraft parts and key minerals and chemicals to Japan, which was followed three weeks later by restrictions on the shipment of petroleum products and scrap metal as well. Deku, on August 30, managed to get an agreement between the French ambassador in Tokyo and the Japanese foreign minister, promising to respect Indochinese integrity in return for cooperation against China. Nishimura, on September 20, gave Deku an ultimatum, agree to the basing, or the 5th Division, known to be at the border, would enter. Japan entered Indochina on September 22, 1940. An agreement was signed, and promptly violated, in which Japan promised to station no more than 6,000 troops in Indochina, and never have more than 25,000 transients the colony. Rights were given for three airfields, with all other Japanese forces forbidden to enter Indochina without Vichy consent. Immediately after the signing, a group of Japanese officers, in a form of insubordination not uncommon in the Japanese military, attacked the border post of Dong Dang, laid siege to Lam Sun, which, four days later, surrendered. There had been 40 killed, but 1,096 troops had deserted. With the signing of the Tripartite Pact on September 27, 1940, creating the axis of Germany, Japan, and Italy, Deku had new grounds for worry. The Germans could pressure the homeland to support their ally, Japan. Japan apologized for the Lam Song incident on October 5. Deku relieved the senior commanders he believed should have anticipated the attack, but also gave orders to hunt down the Lam Song deserters, as well as Viet Minh who had entered Indochina while the French seemed preoccupied with Japan. Through much of the war, the French colonial government had largely stayed in place, as the Vichy government was on reasonably friendly terms with Japan. Japan had not entered Indochina until 1941, so the conflicts from 1939 to the fall of France had little impact on a colony such as Indochina. The Japanese permitted the French to put down nationalist rebellions in 1940. 1941. A contributing factor to the 1941 escalations by Japan, however, resulted when Japan expanded its position in Indochina. The birth of the Viet Minh In February, 1941, Ho Chi Minh returned to Vietnam and established his base in a cave at Pak Bo in Cao Bang Province, near the Sino-Vietnamese border. In May, the Indochinese Communist Party convened its eighth plenum where it placed nationalist goals ahead of communist goals, it prioritized the independence of Vietnam ahead of leading the communist revolution, fomenting class war, or aiding the workers. To that end, the plenum established the League for the Independence of Vietnam, Vietnam Doc Lap Dong Minh Hoi, Viet Minh for short. All Vietnamese political groups were welcome to join the Viet Minh provided they supported ICP led action against the Japanese and French colonizers. Ho Chi Minh's greatest accomplishment during this period was unifying urban nationalist groups with his own peasant communist rebels and creating a single anti-colonial independence movement. <laughs> Vichy agreements with Japan about Indochina Vichy signed the Protocol Concerning Joint Defense and Joint Military Cooperation on July 29. This agreement defined the Franco-Japanese relationship for Indochina, until the Japanese abrogated it in March 1945. It gave the Japanese a total of eight airfields, allow them to have more troops present, and to use the Indochinese financial system, in return for a fragile French autonomy. 
In late November, the United States told the Japanese that it must give up all occupied territories in Indochina and China, and withdraw from the Axis. Especially with U.S. magic communications intelligence on the Japanese diplomatic correspondence, war seemed imminent. A warning of a state of war went to U.S. forces in the Pacific. 24,000 Japanese troops sailed, in December, from Vietnam to Malaya. The Chinese organized the Dong Min Hoi DMH coalition to gain intelligence from Indochina, a coalition dominated by the Vive. The only actual assets in Indochina, however, were Viet Minh. During the Japanese occupation, even during French administration, the Viet Minh exiled to China had an opportunity to quietly rebuild their infrastructure. They had been strongest in Tonkin, the northern region, so moving south from China was straightforward. They had a concept of establishing base areas, Chen Khu, or safe areas, and Tone Khu, often mountainous jungle. Of these areas, the homeland of the VM was near Bac Can Province. See map. Additional Chen Khu developed in Yen Bai Province, Tai Nguyen Province, the traditional stronghold of the PCI, Quang Nai Province, Ho's birthplace, Pak Bo in Cao Bang Province, Nin Bin Province, and Dong Tru in Quang Nin Province. As with many other revolutionary movements, part of building their base was providing shadow government services. They attacked landlords and moneylenders, as well as providing various useful services. They offered education, which contained substantial amounts of political indoctrination. They collected taxes, often in the form of food supplies, intelligence on enemy movement, and service as laborers rather than in money. They formed local militias, which provided trained individuals, but they were certainly willing to use violence against reluctant villagers. Gradually, they moved this system south, although not obtaining as much local support in Annam, and especially Cochinchina. While later organizations would operate from Cambodia into the regions of South Vietnam that corresponded to Kochi China, this was well in the future. Some of their most important sympathizers included educated civil servants and soldiers, who provided clandestine human source intelligence from their workplaces, as well as providing counterintelligence on French and Japanese plans. In August, Ho, while meeting with Chinese Communist Party officials, was held, for two years, by the Kuomintang. Topic. 1943 To make the Dong Min Hoi an effective intelligence operation, the Chinese released Ho and put him in charge, replacing the previously Kuomintang affiliated Vietnamese nationalists. 1944 In 1944, Ho, then in China, had requested a United States visa to go to San Francisco to make Vietnamese language broadcasts of material from the U.S. Office of War Information, the U.S. official or white propaganda. The visa was denied. By August, Ho convinced the Kuomintang commander to support his return to Vietnam, leading 18 guerrillas against the Japanese. Accordingly, Ho returned to Vietnam in September with 18 men trained and armed by the Chinese. Discovering that the ICP had planned a general uprising in the Viet Bac, he disapproved, but encouraged the establishment of armed propaganda teams. The end of Western rule The Japanese revoked French administrative control on March 9 and took French administrators prisoner. They murdered those who refused to initially surrender and or comply with their demands. 
This had the secondary effect of cutting off much Western intelligence about the Japanese in Indochina. They retained Bao Dai as a nominal leader. Even before there was a Vietnamese government, the French Provisional Government declared an intention, on March 24, to have a French Union that would include an Indochinese federation. While France would retain control over foreign relations and major military programs, the Federation would have its own military, and could form relationships outside the Federation, especially with China. There would, however, continue to be a top French official, called High Commissioner rather than Governor General, but still in control. The five states, Annam, Cambodia, Kochi China, Laos, and Tonkin would continue, there would be no Vietnam. In August, Admiral Georges Dajonlu would be named as High Commissioner, with General Jacques Leclerc as his military deputy. Ho's forces rescued an American pilot in March. Washington ordered Lieutenant Colonel Archimedes Paddy to do whatever was necessary to re-establish the intelligence flow, and the OS mission was authorized to contact Ho. He asked to meet General Claire Chenault, the American Air Commander, and that was agreed, under the condition he did not ask for supplies or active support. The visit was polite but without substance. Ho, however, asked for the minor favor of an autographed picture of Chenault. Later, Ho used that innocent item to indicate, to other northern groups, that he had American support. Following the Japanese assumption of power in March 1945, they created a government under Bao Dai. He invited Ngo Dinh Diem to become prime minister but, after receiving no response, turned to Trang Trong Kim and formed a cabinet of French trained but nationalist ministers. His authority extended only to Tonkin and Annam. The Japanese simply replaced the former French officials in Cochinchina. Cao Dai and Ho Ahao members also gained power there. Cambodia in World War II Following Japan's entry into Indochina on of September 1940, the Thai government, under the pro-Japanese leadership of Field Marshal Plak Fibunsongkram, and strengthened by virtue of its Treaty of Friendship with Japan, invaded French protectorate of Cambodia's western provinces to which it had historic claims. Following the Franco-Thai War, Tokyo hosted the signature of a treaty on 9 May 1941 that formally compelled the French to relinquish one-third of the surface area of Cambodia with almost half a million citizens. In August 1941, the Imperial Japanese Army entered the French protectorate of Cambodia and established a garrison that numbered 8,000 troops. Despite their military presence, the Japanese authorities allowed Vichy French colonial officials to remain at their administrative posts but in 1945, in the closing stages of World War II, Japan made a coup de force that temporarily eliminated French control over Indochina. The French colonial administrators were relieved of their positions, and French military forces were ordered to disarm. The aim was to revive the support of local populations for Tokyo's war effort by encouraging indigenous rulers to proclaim independence. On 9 March 1945, young King Narodom Sihanouk proclaimed an independent kingdom of Kampuchea, following a formal request by the Japanese. The Japanese occupation of Cambodia ended with the official surrender of Japan in August 1945 and the Cambodian puppet state lasted until October 1945. Some supporters of the kingdom's Prime Minister Sun Nok Than escaped to northwestern Cambodia, then still under Thai control, where they banded together as one faction in the Khmer Issarak movement. Though their fortunes rose and fell during the immediate post-war period, by 1954 the Khmer Issarak operating with the Viet Minh by some estimates controlled as much as 50% of Cambodia's territory. King Sihanouk reluctantly proclaimed a new constitution on 6 May 1947. While it recognized him as the "...spiritual head of the state." It reduced him to the status of a constitutional monarch of a Cambodia within the French Union. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Lao during World War II. Thai Prime Minister Plak Phibunsongkrum had plans to unify all Thai peoples, including the Lao, under one nation. Following the Franco-Thai War, Japan compelled the Vichy French colonial government to cede parts of the French protectorate of Lao to Thailand, in order to maintain support and expel both the Japanese and Thai. Colonial Governor Jean Deku encouraged the rise of the Lao nationalist movement for national renovation, but, in the south of the country, the Lao Seri movement was formed in 1944 and was not supportive of the French. In March 1945, Japan dissolved French control over its Indochinese colonies and large numbers of French officials in Laos were then imprisoned. King Sisavang Vong was forced into declaring Laotian independence on 8 April and accepting the nation in the Greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. At the same time, remaining French officials and civilians withdrew to the mountains to regroup and join a growing Laotian insurgency led by Crown Prince Savang Vathana against the Japanese, which occupied Vientiane in March 1945. Japan continued to rule Laos directly despite constant civil unrest until it was forced to withdraw in August 1945. Following the Japanese surrender, Prince Fetsarath Ratanavongsa made an attempt to convince King Savang to officially unify the country and declare the Treaty of Protection with the French invalid because the French had been unable to protect the Lao from the Japanese. However, King Savang said that he intended to have Lao resume its former status as a French colony. In October 1945, supporters of Laotian independence announced the dismissal of the king and formed the new government of Lao, the Lao Isara, to fill up the power vacuum of the country. However, the Lao Isara was bankrupt and ill-equipped, and could only await the inevitable French return. At the end of April 1946 the French took Vientiane, by May they had entered Luang Prabang, and the Lao Isra leadership fled into exile in Thailand. On 27 August 1946, the French formally endorsed the unity of Lao as a constitutional monarchy within the French Union. U.S. <laughs> Post-war policy Franklin D. Roosevelt had expressed a strong preference for national self-determination, and was not notably pro-French. Cordell Hull's memoirs say that Roosevelt entertained strong views on independence for French Indochina. That French dependency stuck in his mind as having been the springboard for the Japanese attack on the Philippines, Malaya, and the Dutch East Indies. He could not but remember the devious conduct of the Vichy government in granting Japan the right to station troops there, without any consultation with us but with an effort to make the world believe we approved. After his death, however, the Truman administration experienced very real confrontations such as the Berlin blockade in 1948–1949, in which the French were allies in dealing with the blockade. Harry S. Truman saw French forces as necessary allies in the defense of Western Europe from the Soviet expansion that had already taken much of Eastern Europe. The rise of the Chinese Communists in 1949 and the outbreak of the Korean War in 1950 strengthened the hand of those who saw resistance to communism in East and Southeast Asia as dominating all other issues there. Ousted Chinese Kuomintang under Chiang Kai-shek, exiled to Taiwan, had strong U.S. political allies such as Claire Chenault. Increasingly, and especially with the rise of Joe McCarthy, there was also, at the public level, a reflexive condemnation of anything with the slightest communist connection, or even generally leftist. During this period, France was perceived as more and more strategic to Western interests, and, both to strengthen it vis a vis the Soviet Union and Western Union, and against the perceived threat of Ho and the Chinese communists, the U.S. would support French policy. Vietnamese nationalism or the discouragement of colonialism was really not a matter of consideration. 
Lao, also a proto-state in the French Union, became of concern to the U.S. after the Japanese were removed from control of the Laotian parts of Indochina. Three Lao princes created a movement to resist the return of French colonial rule. Within a few years, Suvana Fuma returned and became prime minister of the colony. Supernuvong, seeing the Viet Minh as his only potential ally against the French, announced, while in the Hanoi area, the formation of the Land of Lao organization, or Pathet Lao. Unquestionably, the Pathet Lao were communist affiliated. Nevertheless, they soon became a focus of U.S. concern, which, in the Truman and Eisenhower administrations, was more focused on anti communism than any nationalist or anti colonial movement. In contrast with other Asian colonies like India, Burma, the Philippines, and Korea, Vietnam was not given its independence after the war. As in Indonesia, the Dutch East Indies, an indigenous rebellion demanded independence. While the Netherlands was too weak to resist the Indonesians, the French were strong enough to just barely hold on. As a result, Ho and his Viet Minh launched a guerrilla campaign, using Communist China as a sanctuary when French pursuit became hot. <laughs> Viet Minh insurgency Just after the Japanese surrender, before the Japanese imprisoned French returned to their desks, Vietnamese guerrillas, under Ho Chi Minh, had seized power in Hanoi and shortly thereafter demanded and received the abdication of the apparent French puppet, Emperor Bao Dai. This would not be the last of Bao Dai. In August 1945, two three-man French teams, under Colonel Henry Cédille, the Commissioner for Kochi China, and Major Pierre Mesmer, Commissioner for Northern Indochina, parachuted, from U.S. aircraft, into Indochina. Reporting to High Commissioner Dajonlu, they were the first new French representatives. Cédille was almost immediately given to the Japanese. He was driven to Saigon, Seminude, as a prisoner. Mesmer was held by Vietnamese, and his team was given poison. One died before they escaped to China. Jean Saintony later became the commissioner for the North. These were the first of the officers who would replace the French officials that had worked under Vichy rule. High officers, such as Admiral Deku, would be sent back to France and sometimes tried for collaboration, but Cédille and Saint-Denis generally kept the French lower-level staff. Earlier in 1945, Pham Nok Thak, deputy minister in Ho's personal office of the president, had met, in Saigon, with U.S. OS Lieutenant Colonel A. Peter Dewey, along with Pham Van Bark, to try to negotiate with the French. Both the Vietnamese and French sides were factionalized. Adding to the confusion was the British Gurkha force under Major General Douglas Gracie, who refused to let Dewey fly a U.S. flag on his car. Dewey was killed at a Viet Minh roadblock in September. <laughs> August Revolution After August Revolution took place throughout Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh declared independence in September. In a dramatic speech, he began with all men are created equal. The Creator has given us certain inalienable rights, the right to life, the right to be free, and the right to achieve happiness. These immortal words are taken from the Declaration of Independence of the United States of America in 1776. In a larger sense, this means that, all the peoples of the world are equal, all the people have the right to live, to be happy, to be free. Turning to the declaration of the French Revolution in 1791, it also states men are born, must be free, and have equal rights. These are undeniable truths. Ho's declaration had none but emotional impact, the French soon re-established their authority after the Japanese surrendered. 
We have no way to know how much of this Ho believed, but it should be remembered as an example of how he understood the thinking of those who would become his enemy. While Lyndon Baines Johnson and Robert S. McNamara never seemed to grasp his beliefs in the willingness to accept protracted war and great losses, in the interest of eventual control. Kochi China, at this time, was far less organized than Tonkin. Cao Dai set up a state around Tay Ninh, while Hoa Hao declared one in the Can Tho area. These sects, along with a non-Viet Minh Trotskyite faction, formed the United National Front UNF, which demonstrated on August 21. The Viet Minh, however, called for the UNF to accept its authority, else let the French to declare all Vietnamese nationalism a Japanese proxy, and the UNF tentatively accepted this on the 25th. The non-communist nationalists became increasingly suspicious believing the Viet Minh Committee of the South was cooperating with Colonel Cedil. Mass demonstrations took place in Saigon on the 2nd, and shots were fired at it. The perpetrators were not identified. Through the Ospati mission, often through emissaries, from the fall of 1945 to the fall of 1946, the United States received a series of communications from Ho Chi Minh depicting calamitous conditions in Vietnam, invoking the principles proclaimed in the Atlantic Charter and in the Charter of the United Nations, and pleading for U.S. recognition of the independence of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam drive, or—as a last resort trusteeship for Vietnam under the United Nations. British and French troops landed in Saigon on September 12, with their commander, M. G. Douglas Gracie, arriving the next day. Gracie's headquarters instructed him, on the 13th, to exercise control only in limited areas, at French request, and after approval by the Southeast Asia Theater Command under Field Marshal Sir William Slim. He was responsible for taking the Japanese surrender, and acting in temporary command of both British and French troops. Cedil, on 18 September, asked Dewey, in Saigon, to try to head off the threatened Viet Minh general strike. Dewey met with Thak and other Vietnamese, and took back the message. It would be extremely difficult, at this point in time to control the divergent political factions not all pro-Viet Minh, but all anti-French." On 21–22 September 1945, British Gurkhas, under Gracie, took the central prison back from the Japanese, releasing French paratroopers. Cedil, with those paratroopers, captured several Japanese-held police stations on the 22nd, and then took control of the administrative areas on the 23rd. Some Viet Minh guards were shot. French control was reasserted. Patty's guidance was that the U.S. had essentially given up the idea of a trusteeship, but still, at the UN Foundation conferences, the U.S. was in favor of gradual independence. But while the U.S. took no action on Ho's requests, it was also unwilling to aid the French. It has been suggested that the Viet Minh accepted a significant number of Japanese troops, estimated by Gosha as at least 5,000, who had no immediate way to get back to Japan, and often had ties to the local culture. Their experience in a conventional military would have been welcome. Topic. See also Indochina Wars History of Vietnam History of Laos French colonial empire <laughs>